Hi, I'm Gary Rubenstein, and this is part six of Feynman's Lost Lecture. Uh, where we last left off, I was showing that the, uh, the area of an isosceles triangle is uh, proportional, or it, it varies with the square of the height. And as you can see in this triangle here, um, triangle EBF over the square of LB, which is the height, is 0.27. And that's going to be true, as you can see, even if I make the isosceles triangle uh, bigger. I also showed in the last tutorial that if I have something that's not a um, it's not an isosceles triangle but it's just a just any triangle and in this case it's got this 30 degree angle here um, there is an isosceles triangle that has the same area as it and in that sense the area of this triangle is going to be proportional to the square of this line, which is it's not the height of the triangle, it's the height of the equivalent isosceles triangle that happens to have the same base angle. And I can move this around. You see this, this 0.27 here. Let me calculate it uh, with triangle uh, BCD. Here it is. Uh, it's also 0.27. So even if I, as long as I keep this angle CBD as a 30 degree angle, even though this triangle itself is not an isosceles triangle. It is, its area is proportional to the square of BL, where BL is the height of the isosceles triangle that, has that, that shares that vertex angle with it. So that's a, a key concept I want you to keep in mind. It's important for the proof that the area of a triangle with some given angle, in this case, angle CBD is 30 degrees, the area of that triangle will be proportional to the square of the height of the of this isosceles triangle. Okay. We're going to see how this applies to Feynman's picture now. Here is uh, Feynman's uh, picture, his model, where the planet's going around, the sun is pulsing so that the planet create sort of equal angles. In this case, it's a 30 degree angle. And as you can see, um, these triangles are not the same area like they are with the Newton uh, model, but um, the ones out there are bigger. So here I've got uh, what's been created is a 12-sided polygon here. Now, <clears throat> if all these triangles had the same area, that would mean the amount of time that it spends in each interval would be equal. But these triangles are clearly bigger than these triangles. But all of these triangles have the same 30 degree vertex angle. So, according to the thing I had just proved, the amount of time spent going from here to here, or from here to here, is going to be proportional to the square of some line segment somewhere over here, sort of the, the, the height of the equivalent isosceles triangle. So the amount of time that it takes to get, for instance, from, uh, from here to here, the amount of time is equal, it was proportional to the area of this big triangle. But the area of that big triangle itself is proportional to the square of the essentially the distance to this uh, of the distance to the sun, not the uh, the distance. If if I were to create the um, the isosceles triangle that height, so I'm going to say that one more time. Such an important point: the amount of time that it takes the planet to go from here to here is proportional to the area of this triangle, but the area of this triangle is proportional to the square of the distance from the sun to a special point, which is uh, the altitude of the equivalent isosceles triangle, which is, which is a point somewhere over here. Well, now let's get to the uh, change in velocity. You might remember in the Newton diagram, these changes in velocity here were proportional to the, um, the force, which was 1 over distance squared, multiplied by the time, but the time was a constant. So each of these little things were different lengths. Each of these little line segments were different lengths that make up this polygon. 
because they're uh, proportional to the size of, of the force, which is 1 over r squared times the time, which is a constant. Now, if I try to make a velocity diagram under the Feynman uh, model, the change in velocity will also be the force, which is proportional to 1 over uh, the distance squared multiplied by the time. But in Feynman's diagram, the time is not a constant, like it is in Newton, but the time is the area of these triangles, which happens to be proportional to the distance squared. So the force is proportional to 1 over the distance squared, and the time is proportional to the distance squared, and that means when we multiply them together, and this is Feynman's big uh, moment, is that the change in velocity will be a constant under each time interval. And that's what Feynman predicts. So watch what happens when I start uh, doing time intervals. Notice that I have this first uh, triangle here, which is um, this first triangle here is bigger than this one. I scaled it up. But it's been scaled first by dividing it by this time interval, which was the area of this triangle, which was small. Now the next triangle that's got the sort of different uh, velocities or related to the velocities, it's, it's, a, it's a bigger triangle, but it's also divided by a bigger, the time is bigger, so it's divided by a bigger triangle, and we end up with this, uh, this triangle. And I'm just going to animate this so we can kind of see the rest of these happen. and I'll stop it there. Notice this, this is sort of a isosceles triangle here and it kind of matches up with this one. So these triangles have all been scaled by uh, dividing them by the um, time, which is the area of these triangles. And look at what's happened. As Feynman predicted, these line segments here, which are the changes in velocity, are all equal. Now I'm going to add another component to my diagram. I'm going to draw in this little, I'm going to extend this line a bit. And I want to uh, remind you that if I draw this line segment right here, that this angle here will always be congruent to this angle that connects these three points. Now, th these are all 30 degree angles, because that, that's how Feynman makes his picture. So this angle will be 30 degrees up here also. Okay, keep that in mind as I now animate this. And I'm also putting, extending this line a bit. Now this, this triangle here is similar to this little triangle here. And this triangle here is similar to this one over here. And basically this angle, this exterior angle of this polygon, is the same as the exterior as, as this angle right here. And since the way Feynman does it, these internal these angles here at, around the center are all 30 degree angles. That makes all of these angles 30 degree angles also, which on my velocity diagram makes all of these angles 30 degrees. So if I uh, animate this again, watch what happens. Observe this velocity diagram over here. Not only are all the sides, which represent the changes in velocity, not only are all of those uh, the same length, as Feynman predicted, but these exterior angles here that are being created are also all, they're all 30 degrees in this case, and they're all congruent, but those angles are always equal to, to these angles, these interior angles. Um, so basically what we have here is a regular polygon. This is a regular 12-sided figure. And this point here, though, is not at the center. There is a, a circle that would fit in, that would fit, uh, in there. That would, be, that would be the center. And if I change my angle to, uh, to let's say, 15 degrees, as you can see, I get um, a 24-sided figure, which is looking more like an ellipse and my velocity diagram is looking more like a circle.